Hi guys this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this lesson i'm basically going to take you through another lesson by a great youtuber Rick Beato i'm sure you all know him he teaches music theory ear training film scores what makes the song great incredible channel you guys have to check this out so he did a like an instagram uh, reel if if that's the right word where he basically played a bark etude a very bark like chord progression and i instantly it it instantly caught my ear and i learned it on the piano and uh, practiced it on all the 12 keys and i figured it's something you should learn there are a lot of harmonic concepts which you heard in the intro video and what we've ended up doing is we've notated this entire lesson it will be available on our patreon as well so if you read sheet music do check out the notation uh, most of these chords especially for a lot of bach songs and classical music in general is based on the idea of spread chords or spread voicing what we mean by that is if you take a good old d minor chord d minor d f a like that What happens now is you you don't play the F in the middle especially in the deeper range because a lot of the classical music especially by Bach is written for the cello so there's always a cello in the music so if you played a minor chord like this the default way it may not sound that that, uh, that clear for the listener's ear so if you play it like that you get a lot of depth you get the root you get the fifth and the third which was making the overall uh, production of the chord very muddy you're playing the third up top so we also call that as a tenth interval and there are two kinds of tenth intervals in music the major tenth which is like a major third played an octave up and a minor tenth played again a third and octave up but minor okay great so that's the basic process and a lot about this sort of music is based on yes spread voicing as i told you but also chord inversion so you're not going to play a b flat always like b flat d f you're going to go in a lot of cases there we go b flat with a d in the bass so that again creates this vibe and this really interesting sonic texture right guys so uh, before we get cracking it'll be awesome if you can hit that subscribe button hit turn on that bell for regular notifications we do a lot of regular lessons on youtube we also have a members only portal on our website nathanielschool.com you can also access those videos on youtube as a member and uh, if you'd like to learn lessons with with our faculty with me as well there are virtual courses uh, at nathaniel school of music so head over to nathanielschool.com if you'd like and understand more fill up a form okay enough of sales let's now get cracking so i'm going to pretty much start with what rick beato talks about in that uh, instagram clip of his which is like really short like under a few like a few seconds long and i'm going to try and break that down theoretically and also practically on the piano so if you play other instruments like guitar bass or the violin it would still help because i am talking about the theory and then we'll execute it on the piano as well okay so i'm choosing to play the chords in this lesson with two hands so i'll be playing two notes in the left hand and one note in the right hand keeping it a bit simple on the other hand you could also end up doing this strategy with just the one hand where you'll have to slide and probably use the pedal right now this can be tough for a lot of players especially if you're younger or if your hands are not stretching out which is why i've developed a system which will be super easy for anyone to try out wherein you play two notes in this side and you play one note in that side is going to be the upper extension 
So this will form the triad. So let me just play the the progression and then let me try and explain. It'll be awesome if you get your keyboards out or your instruments out so you can learn along. I will teach it slowly and make sure that you actually get it by the end of the video you're playing it to some level and then obviously you can rewatch the video or whatever. So we are going to play this uh, as an arpeggio sequence in 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 and pretty much like the original version played by Rick Beato in his rendition. So you go 2 3. So let me first show you the arpeggio. The first chord is our D minor played like this. D A F. So get these notes going. D A F. And then we arpeggiate it as follows. D A F A F A D A F A F A 1 and 2 and 3. So don't confuse this with a 6 8. This feels to me like it's a 3. Because there are three strong beats. One and two and three and then you could hold the pedal for additional harmonic flavor. So it's also fun to sing it. Speed it up. And when you speed it, focus a lot on your dynamics. So get louder, softer. Jumping soft. And when you go loud and soft, don't forget to retain the speed. Sometimes when we go fast, we speed up. Maybe practicing with a metronome would help. Anyway, so this is the general vibe and the general style of the arpeggio. Now, to move forward, let's look at the other chords. The first chord is D minor, spread voiced. The second chord is B flat major where all you have to do, it's quite easy, you just move this A played by the index finger to the B flat. Again, you could use your index or you could sneak in your thumb there. So, there we go. So, and that creates a B flat major with a D bass. So that's B flat over D. Right? In the, if this was D minor scale, B flat would be the flat six. So you could argue that that's the flat six major as a slash chord. So one minor, B flat major or the flat six major. And now the third chord is a very, very classical Bach chord. If you think about it, there's there's the diminished chord which gives you that pain. Okay, that's the third chord. So first chord, D minor. Second chord, B flat major played in this 3-4 setting. Third chord is the beautiful diminished chord. Check that out. That's E diminished. Again, I'm playing it in the spread version. Again, without the G in the bass but playing it in my with my pinky in the right hand. And then, check that out. So then it goes to A major with a C sharp bass in the left hand. So it's sort of like your 5 major, assuming we are in the key of D minor. So D minor, B flat major, which is the 6 flat major, the 2 diminished, that's E diminished. And now the 5 major, but or 5 dominant chord, dominant 7th, with a different bass. That's A major with a C sharp. Let's do that again. There we go. I can imagine a cello playing this. If you play the cello, That'll be awesome. Or even a guitar. It'll sound beautiful on a guitar. Or a bass. Okay. And um, let's move forward. You come back to D minor. And 
it gets really interesting from here come back to the one minor so we go to a one minor at the fifth chord and then we do a g major which takes us out of the key of d minor now why you may argue why the g major because it's trying to imply that we are going to a new key and that is going to be the well we argue g major or g 7th or g dominant is the 5 of which scale so then you think circle of fifths fifths fourths etc you'll realize that a g likes to pull to the c minor could also pull to a c major but this is a minor exercise so that's why we have that g taking us to c minor and then you have an entire key change and you have to repeat the whole drill from c minor and then it goes to b B flat major, and then it actually moves down a tone, 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 bottom. So it's almost like you're covering six scales through this entire exercise. If you practice it hard enough, which I encourage you to do, the notation is available for you. You can do this. Try and do this on all scales. It'll improve your hearing. It'll improve your voicing. It's a great exercise. You guys should definitely dive in. So let's come back to D minor. So if If I'm getting this right, there are six chords to play in an arpeggiated manner in a three-four environment, and let's see how we get cracking. D minor, B flat over D, E diminished, A over C sharp, back to D minor, G over B, which takes us to a scale change, C minor, and the whole story. repeats functionally on the new key c minor you could argue it's c harmonic minor because a lot of the chords seem to be from the harmonic world rather than the natural minor or the melodic and so on so i hope you got the arpeggio pattern because the arpeggio it's all about that line 1 2 3 but i would encourage you if you like to do this and kind of mess around with it you know let's say do it over a 5 8 for example check that out that's what i like to do quite often and then it becomes very like progressive or prog rock or heavy metal and stuff uh, then you can go whatever you can just modify the arpeggio so even if you want to make it like a 4 by 4 arpeggio i'm not a huge fan of it but you could so played in different time signatures start with your pinky always and the trick which i have to make this sound really nice is hold down your pinky hold down the base of your left hand it the chords will sound a lot stronger don't go there's a kind of a jerk there right so i see a lot of students who start off not realizing this very important the lower notes of your bass need you need to hold your pinky it will sound a lot warmer at least until the next chord event occurs so d minor you could also hold your pedal but with the pedal you have the additional responsibility of needing to lift it between chords okay guys so there's one more final thing which i want to leave which uh, rick biardo does really well in the performance i guess he does it very naturally you know or it may be a guitar thing you know to go from one root and glide so smoothly to the next root so what he does very beautifully in that instagram uh, lesson is plays that e now he realizes that he has to come down to c sharp Now there's a bigger jump there it's a jump of a minor third so what does he do So he does that in between d so that's just something i caught in the lesson so and 
and now do now again so whenever you have a gap of a minor third or a, a gap more than a second then you do 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 d c b and then you repeat the procedure so let me show you that breakdown which he does with the passing bass note if you want to call it that do 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 e diminish do de do climbing do do de do de do de de do de c passing and repeat the same procedure on c minor de do de do do de do do de do 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 de do do and you can go on to b flat sharp minor and e minor and we finally end with the same d minor which we started with and but it's an octave down isn't it it still sounds beautiful check that out it's like a low low set of notes on the piano and it still sounds nice and impactful right so that's about the lesson guys it's there for you on patreon if you'd like the entire notation on all the keys is waiting for you there if you'd like to revise it and research it more uh, also there are some notes where i've talked about the chord degrees and the chord functions if you'd like to revisit your theory i've handwritten these notes it's all there as a pack on a patreon post so just as a quick recap we've just studied a six chord progression in the key of d minor and then it kind of circles downward the whole tone scale so it keeps going down d to the c to the b flat to the g sharp or a flat to the f sharp to the e and then back to the d essentially a whole tone scale right and it within each uh, key in this case d minor we have six chords d minor the one minor the six flat major then the pain of the two diminished and then you do the dominant with a c sharp bass very bark like back to the tonic then the dominant of the new key there we go so six chord progression hope you guys enjoy the lesson let us know what you think in the comments don't forget to like the video subscribe to our channel hit that bell and do consider watching some other videos or heading over to our website for more content and stuff like that and share the video with your friends family or anyone you like cheers catch you in the next one